Well, hey everybody. Um, this is another section of the nature of science. Um, this is a little more general, I guess you could say, but with some specific definitions. Um, first, we're going to talk about technology, and then we're going to talk about some of the other things, some of the words in science that the public at large generally misunderstands, um, just because they haven't had school in a while, and, and um, it, there's just some more nuanced things to learn about it. But all right, so whenever you hear about science, typically you hear about technology as well. Um, and technology, in essence, is just taking what we know in science and applying it to improve our quality of life. Okay, what's technology? Well, a pen is technology. Um, a, uh, a mug is technology. It's knowing the thermal properties of a mug uh, of materials and then using it to keep your coffee or tea hot. Um, your computer, your laptop is technology, obviously. But um, yeah, that's the idea. We know things like thermal properties, friction and how it rubs on things, I guess. Um, or even uh, in a computer, semiconductors, electromagnetism. The electricity that you use is technology. And that's what we're talking about here. Okay, And that's the key when you start talking about um, this part right here. If we know something in science, we can do it with technology. That's the idea. And then the other part of this is that when you think of technology, technology is super important to science. Okay? The more technology you have, the better your science is going to turn out because you're going to be able to do more computing, you're going to be able to uh, create bigger and bigger particle accelerators, etc., etc., so you get more science. And then, since you have better science, you they can then create better technology. That's supposed to be an arrow. Please forgive me. Um, but the idea is that technology is dependent on science, and science is dependent on technology. And so when technology gets bigger, science gets bigger. When science gets better, technology gets better. When technology gets better, science gets better. And it's this whole sort of snowball effect, if you will. And now on to the important words that are often misunderstood. It's really important that you know these because you need to know the difference for when you become an educated citizen. What do these words actually mean? What are scientists, what are journalists actually saying to you? Okay? Now, first off, hypothesis. What is it? Well, a lot of us typically think of it as an educated guess. Well, guess what? Get that out of your vocabulary. It was okay back in middle school, back in elementary school, but we know better than that now. What we know is that it is a testable prediction. Okay, write that down. Because in order to be a true hypothesis, it has to be testable, and you have to be able to make a prediction, okay? If you can't test it, <clears throat> no use in even calling it science. If you're not predicting something, it's not science, okay? So you've grown up, you're in high school, you now know it's a testable prediction. It's a better way of looking at it, okay? Next up is theory, okay? Theory is often, often misused. In fact, the worst way to, that it's used is when people say, well, it's only a theory. Well, don't ever use that. Don't ever use that because a theory, when you minimize it by saying it's just a theory, it makes it sound like it's just a hunch that a scientist had, and that's not true. Um, a theory is science's best explanation, and what I mean, I mean best explanation. You have a lot of scientists working on this. It's not just one person's hunch, okay? And here's the thing. It's based on multiple observations. In other words, lots and lots and lots of data, okay? And it's done by multiple scientists. There's rarely a theory that only has one scientist working on it. Einstein's theory of relativity, okay, I'll give you that, but it's been verified and modified by more and more, uh, more contemporary scientists. So we're still working on it. Um, the other idea here is that it's been peer reviewed by other scientists. It's not something that somebody just makes up and throws out there and Voila, it's scientific. No. Lots of scientists come together, try to poke holes in the argument. Okay? Now, the law 
When you talk about a scientific law, what you're doing is you're talking about a rule that nature plays by. Okay? Consider this. You've never seen a game of cricket, which I'm sure most of you probably haven't. Um, you haven't seen a game of cricket, so you could probably go to a game and try to figure out the rules that they play by. Or how about this? Think of a friend, maybe you uh, think of somebody who lives um, in a place where they play cricket a lot, and they come over to the United States, and they're watching a baseball game. They have no idea what's going on, maybe. And they could probably figure out, though, what the rules are. You know, three outs makes a, a half inning. Um, three strikes and you're out. Um, you know, that sort of thing. They could figure out the rules, okay? That's what a law is. Think of Newton's laws. Um, F equals ma. Uh, every force has an equal and opposite force. That sort of thing. Okay. But here's the thing: is that it was a hypothesis. It was something that somebody discovered. Okay, and it has been tested over and 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 over again, and it's never been disproven. That's the key, especially with Newton's laws. They have never been disproven. Okay, and that's the part of this is a lot of people get theory and law mixed up. Let me explain a little bit here. Okay, laws are typically discovered. Discovered, kind of like when we were talking about uh, you know you discover the laws of cricket, the rules of cricket, or your friend discovers the laws of baseball. Whereas theory is more something that's created in order to explain. In other words, if somebody started talking about how baseball came to be, or really more how to play baseball the best possible way, that would be a theory. It's a way, it's something that's created in order to explain something. Okay? All right, and then you've got facts. A lot of people mess this up. A fact is something that is assumed to be true. What I mean by that is... Swans are white. Well, yeah, by definition, we call it a swan if it's white. Um, this color here is blue. Yes, that's a fact because we've defined this color to be blue, and we've defined this color to be orange. That's the idea that we're talking about. Information that is assumed to be true, typically because we've defined it that way. All right? Now, I have these in a specific order here. Okay. You could probably figure that out soon, but the idea is, what do hypotheses, theories, laws, and even facts have in common? Now, here's the key, all right? All of them are subject to change. Ooh, my handwriting is getting better, okay? They are subject to change. That means any of these could change depending on something, okay? Um, now, facts, they typically don't get changed because we define them a certain way, like different wavelengths of light are different colors. They're defined that way, so they probably won't change. But if we find a black swan, we'd have to change it. That rarely, rarely happens. A law also rarely, rarely happens to be changed. However, for example, we find that um, if you look at the universe, Newton's laws sort of don't work when you look at really big or really tiny subatomic scales. That doesn't mean the law is wrong, it just means that there's a different set of conditions when you get to those scales. So this very rarely changes. Very, 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 very rarely changes. Theories will change more often, but still it's not the theory as a whole. It's typically the details of the theory as opposed to, well, we're between 13 and 14 billion years old as a universe. Well. Now we're closer to between, I believe it's 13.4 and 13.8, something like that. So the details get better. But the big thing here, the big difference between the theory and a law, a theory is usually created to explain why, and a law is really more to explain how. But anyway, facts very, very, very rarely change. Laws also very rarely change. Theories will change, but it's just the little details. And then hypotheses, well, they can change almost at any time. It depends on what stage of the experiment that you're in. Um, so the idea is they all are subject to change. That's part of the uh, attitude of science that I talked about in part one of this vodcast.